Hi, I'm Shalise, a compulsive eater, food addict from Phoenix, Arizona. And today we want to talk a little bit about fighting the food. We are food fighters. We come to this program fighting food every day. It fights us, we fight back. It's been a struggle, it's been a fight our whole lives. So how do we end the fight? Where does, where does the end of the fight come? Uh, for me, the end of the fight came somewhere in step one, uh, when I admitted that I was powerless over the food, the food fight, and I was just exhausted and couldn't do it anymore. I, I, I just couldn't take it. Um, but the question, a question that came to us from um, one of our friends here is, how as a sponsor do I help someone to, or how do I, how do we navigate through helping somebody who's still fighting the food? Um, and so it, it's an interesting thing because it's such an individual experience walking through this, but it's all pretty much the same. We all come in fighting and for me, my experience is that there had to be a shift between a diet in, into abstinence and understanding that where um, that that was where I kind of started to put my boxing gloves down. That um, I didn't need to that I what I needed was something really super duper solid, something so black and white, just as black and white as an alcoholic's sobriety. There's no question to an alcoholic. It's not like, oh, well, um, you know, vodka's not okay, but a, a beer now and then is okay. That, that this doesn't work for an alcoholic. And it's the same thing for me as a food fighter. Um, I need to have a super solid, solid plan. Um, so when I'm, when I'm working with somebody who comes to me and they see what I want, see what I have, that, they, that I have what they want, that they see that I'm not fighting the food anymore, I'm not fighting the weight anymore, um, and they ask me, what are you doing, and will you sponsor me? And, and we have our first conversations and we begin to talk about step one and talking about the powerlessness, and I have them listen to a couple of recordings before we even chat, um, but that's where it kind of begins, you begin to sort of sort the food thing out is when you establish a food plan. And the way that it was brought to me, I, I, was, I came in fighting food and I actually, with my first sponsor, brought a plan that was abstinent with me. And I asked her, do you think this would be okay? And she's like, sure, let's give it a shot. And so we did, did, I did it for a little bit and it just didn't sit well with me for many reasons. And she said, why don't you try a 301 plan? And I didn't know what that was. She, she um, helped me to see what it was, weighed and make three weighted major meals a day with nothing in between one day at a time. And it was really hard for me to wrap my brain around. And, um, but she helped to kind of guide me through what that looked like because I had no idea. All I knew was diet, right? And being good on a diet or, you know, not messing up on a diet or this, this is just has a totally different purpose. And so for me, um, helping somebody, it, there's, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And just kind of guiding a little bit at a time through seeing um, that when we mean, when we say four ounces of protein, when we say, you know, a certain amount of veggies, a certain amount of fruit, what that looks like is exact. And it, it's not, we're not playing with it. It's not, I'm not doing more. I'm not doing less. I'm not making decisions around it anymore. Like basically the fight is over when I'm not, when I'm not controlling it or making the decisions anymore. And it's, it's really through the help of a sponsor. There's no way I could have done that on my own. Like it wasn't even a, a concept that I could grasp because all I knew was a diet. All I knew was, and a diet to me meant restrict, restrict and be miserable. That's what it meant for me. And this is exactly the opposite. This is giving my body exactly what it needs when it needs it and being satisfied and totally and completely on this food plan, eliminating the cravings. So um, it, it's, we all have people ask, well, okay, well, what about this food item? What about this food item? They'll send me pictures, they'll send me a label, you know, and it, to me, it, it, like, for example, popcorn or, or rice crackers or things like that. 
I don't mess with things like that are snacky. And so I will invite them to stick with the grains that are on the plan. And um, they can either do it or not. You know, it's, it's not a, to me, it's not like you must do this. It's, I don't do that. And I invite you to not do that as well. And so it's, uh, and not, not worrying about whether or not they're going to do it or not worrying about whether or not they're going to follow the plan or fall off the plan. It's really, it, I'm not fighting that either. Like I, all I've got is what I can share. Like my experience, this is what works for me. Six years running. I got something. I think it's working and it might work for you too. So this is what I'm going to share. Um, and, and there are, I also invite people if they are feeling like they're still fighting it and they're wanting to add this or do that, I invite them to find there, there are plenty of sponsors out there that would probably sponsor you if you eat popcorn and if you eat those things and do those things and I invite you to find one, but I'm not that person. I'm not that person. If you want, if you want a solid black and white plan, I'm your gal. So it's kind of letting, like, I don't play tug of war with sponsees. I just share, again, the fight I love in the book, book, big book, it says, we ceased fighting anything, everything, even alcohol. You know, we ceased fighting food. We ceased fighting sponsees. I don't fight anything. I don't fight anyone um, with regards to the food. It's, it's, it's an invitation. You can do it or you can not. You can do it and receive the benefits of it. And, or you can not do it and not receive the benefits of it. Um, uh, but again, it's again, letting go for me as a sponsor, I'm not fighting the food. I'm not fighting the sponsees with the food. It's, I don't, I'm not nervous about what they'll say or think if I say a certain thing or say, Nope, I wouldn't do that. I don't worry about it at all because they can do it or not do it. But, um, it, it's just a matter of, it, and it's interesting when, when the food gets put down, when it's down and we're not fighting it anymore, it's a non-issue. Like we got bigger things to work on. We, we, later on in the, you know, step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, the food is not even a thing anymore. Uh, it'll come up occasionally. We'll have questions about it. Work with sponsees. I still have questions about it even six years later working with my sponsor. I, I constant and, and when, with, when my sponsees are sponsoring, They'll send me questions and I'll be like, hey, I don't know about this. What do you think about this? All the time. So it's, it's so cool too because I still don't know everything. And, but it, it's, it, we're all working together to stay, to, to not fight it anymore. Um, and so I, hopefully that answers the questions and I'm going to pass, answers the question as much as I can and then I'm going to pass it over to Lulu. Oh, you're muted, Lulu. Hi, here I am. Great job, girl. That was good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so we cease fighting. We cease fighting everything, even food. Um, so I'm fortunate to be at that stage in my recovery now because those are the kind of the promises in step nine. So I know that when I see a newcomer fighting, they're maybe supposed to be fighting because uh, they haven't ceased fighting. They haven't even started the program. Um, but um, whenever, whenever somebody is fighting it and they're looking for, what about this product? What about this product? Can I do this? Some, any kind of negotiating, I always ask why. It's a really important question. It's like, why? Why? Why do you want that food? Well, because, like I said, I've heard the popcorn thing. It's like, okay, so if we only, if we don't eat in between, are you planning to put your meal on a bed of popcorn? Like you're going to make a bed of popcorn and then you're just going to put your chicken and your veggies on it. I mean, or do you want to sit there when you want to pretend you're at a movie, you know, you're going to watch a movie and eat popcorn. It's just kind of, so like the answer is why. And, um, um, it's usually never a reason that, has any true value to true happiness. Um, it's just about fear. It's just about fear of letting go of this item and always thinking I'm never gonna have it as long as I live. Um, 
if you're lucky, you won't have it as long as you live, but you know something, you might have it another day. So you don't even have to think about that because you can have it any day you want. You just, you, you're choosing not to. Um, so I always like to ask why first, and if there's really no good reason, I don't want to, I don't even want to talk about it, but if there's a good reason, I'm trying to think of an example of a good reason. Um, uh, I can't think of a good reason <laughs> because most people that are fighting the food plan, they're just, maybe they, they either are afraid of letting items go. They're afraid of, uh, letting go of what's been normal to them all their lives. And now this is like abnormal until it becomes the new norm. Um, or they are maybe just want a teeny bit of control. They're feeling like they're out of control. They feel like they've got like some kind of food police in their life, you know? And it's like, you know, I use that all the time. I told somebody this morning, I'm not the step five police. I told somebody <laughs> two days ago, I'm not the step 10 police. You know, it's just like, I'm not, I'm not the food police, you know? It's like, you know, it's between you and God. Um, I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to, I'm not here to keep you abstinent. I don't have that power. I don't even have the power to keep myself abstinent. I just tap into a power to help me keep, keep me abstinent. And it's always worth it. It's always worth it when I'm abstinent. It's always worth it. So. There's nothing really to negotiate on my end. And uh, I like to show other people that, um, you know, if you just kind of surrender and it's a, when you're not, there's so much levels of surrender in this program and they happen as you go along. And this is the first one. And it's like a real big one for an active food addict. So it's kind of a big one. And it's just like, you know something, just feel the gentleness of it just feel that self-love and self-care every time you put your food on the scale on day one, just watch yourself and say, I'm taking care of myself. Instead of looking for what's wrong, look for what's right for that day. And then at the end of the day, if it really felt good because you felt like you were, you had like some kind of order, in a life of disorder, you can do it tomorrow, you know? And, um, and it really is the most important thing that you're gonna do today. And it's the most important thing that I do every day. And it reminds me of this reading in the big book. It's on page 450 uh, in, in, the, um, in the story, He Lived Only to Drink. Um, it's down the bottom of the page. If you go to page 450, um, he's talking about his resentments. They're mounting. I'm just like, oh, God, like, I mean, I'm in, I'm real, real, I have this bonfire of resentment, rage, beckon, or I have this bonfire of food fighting, whatever your, whatever your bonfire is. It says, then I realized that I had to separate my sobriety from everything else that was going on in my life. No matter what happened or didn't happen, I couldn't drink, I couldn't eat. In fact, none of these things that I was going through had anything to do with my sobriety. The tides of life flow endlessly for the better or worse. Life is a series of situations. That what's life is, the tides of life flow endlessly. It's not going to end. Don't wait for this situation to, heal itself or move on because there's going to be another one waiting both good and bad and i cannot allow my sobriety to become dependent on these ups and downs of living sobriety must have a life of its own sobriety must have a life it's separate it's separate my sobriety my abstinence my food i go food shopping i i prepare things i do prep cooking in advance I weigh and measure my meals. I have everything I want. I make sure it's fresh. I make sure it's just what I enjoy and that it's precisely on my food plan. It's separate from my life. It makes my life. But if I'm up or down and then I'm saying, oh, popcorn would be fun right now. It's like, it's, it's, you've kind of meshed these two things together. The ups and downs of life, the ebbs and flows of life 
we don't even have to call them ups and downs. It just ebbs and flows, you know, and it might look bad, but it's kind of like that good news, bad news analogy. I don't know if I've said that in one of my other recordings. I love the bad news, the good news, bad news story. So it's like uh, there was a, um, oh, how does the story go? I hope I don't butcher it. There's a Indian guy. I don't, I think it was an Indian guy and it, it has no significance to the story, but I think it started, there was an Indian and he, um, he had on his farm, he had this horse and the next day the horse was gone. The horse disappeared and all the townspeople were saying, oh no, this is such bad news, such bad news. The horse is gone. Oh my God, oh, what are we going to do? And then, um, the, the farmer said, um, good news, bad news, who knows? So the next day, the horse comes back with another horse. And all the townspeople were like, this is such good news. We have two horses now. How great is this? Yay, good news, good news. And then um, the, uh, the farmer said, good news, bad news, who knows? So then the next day, his son was riding the horse, the new horse, got thrown from the horse, broke his leg. All the townspeople, oh, this is such bad news. Oh, if that horse never showed up, he wouldn't have a broken leg. Oh, this is just awful news. Good news, bad news, who knows? So then the next day, didn't they come around, um, um, have what's the word uh, um, um, drafting people to go into the service there was a there was a war right around the corner they came for that boy his son who was 18 years old they came for him he couldn't go because he had a broken leg oh <gasps> this is such good news oh i'm so grateful he has a broken leg he doesn't he's not going to go in the service he doesn't have to go to war this is such good news you know you could go on and on forever with this it's like you know, just because something looks like bad news, just wait. Because, you know, if you really believe that God's kind of got this ebb and flow of life and what's coming into my life that's going to serve me, all I know is that my darkest, the darkest hour of my soul that brought me to this program uh, turns out to be really the brightest spot in my life. So good news, bad. And I'm a food addict. Oh, it's such bad news such bad news. It's brought me so much joy to be having had that experience that seems like it was a bad flow of life to um, turn out to be the blessing that it is today that's helping me to see life in a whole different way. So, you know, in the big scheme of things, I mean, really? Like, do I want to really know what kind of squash I can have or if I can have popcorn or can I use butter or can I use, yeah you can go on and on about all these things um uh I remember somebody had a food plan I put her on the food plan and I was like email me your food plan for the next day so I can be sure that you understand the structure of this food plan so she emails me the food plan so I'm reading it and it says breakfast you know two ounces of oatmeal six ounces of blueberries uh -huh. and then lunch it said blah 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 then it said eight ounces of sangria I was like, sangria? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see that on the food plan. And I was like, I emailed her back and I was like, well, where did you get sangria? Like, what food group is that, right? And uh, <laughs> it, it, outside of the fact that it's all sugar and it's booze. And uh, she says, uh, oh, we can't drink? And I was like, well, yeah, we kind of don't drink alcohol. And then I thought, you know something? It doesn't say that on the food plan. No, it does. I just thought it just, who would miss it? So, you know, just got to go with the flow. The, the go with the flow. I just said, no, we don't do that. That's okay. But I can see how it wasn't clear, I guess. <laughs> but that's what I got on the food fighting. Nope, this, it's just... Usually when food is being fought, it's because the sobriety isn't separate and full of power and full of importance on its own. 
Thank you. And I'll just add, I just, I love what you said. Thank you so much for sharing. It's such a pleasure and such a joy to not be fighting the food. And if you're still fighting the food and you're listening to this recording, I invite you to email us or reach out to somebody in this group that's not fighting it anymore. If you want to know how to put it down, you can do it too. You can have this too. Um, and just invite you to, to check it out and give it a shot. Can I say one more thing? Please. Step it up. Step it up. Step it up. <laughs> 